Well, hello and welcome to Unleash Dogs Without Limits. I'm Carl Metzler. We got a great show lined up for you this week. We're in Indiana for the Pro Sport Competition Coon Hunt. Now, whether you're a seasoned pro or you don't know anything at all about coon hunting, we're going to take a deep dive into the competitive world of coon hounds and competition coon hunting right here on Unleash. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. I'm Jake Moore from Dillsboro, Indiana. I've been coon hunting since about 1997. I was about 13, 14 years old. Uh, local guy here, Danny Whiteford, he's passed away. Uh, he got me into it. I enjoy anything outdoors, especially with dogs, uh, in squirrel hunting, duck hunting, coon hunting. It was just another thing to do. Um, only thing you can do at night is catfish or sleep, so I decided to coon hunt. My name is Jeremy Shaddy. I live here in Versailles, Indiana. I have been coon hunting for roughly, I'm 45. I was probably 14 when I went, so 30, 31 years. This area is, is, I'm very fortunate to live here because we have flat farm ground, big timber. We've got river bottoms, creek bottoms. If you like, there's also, you can drive 15, 20 minutes, be in hills and hollers. When the coons are, you know, in the dead of winter and they've been dogged to death up in the flats, you can, you can go hunt the hills and hollers and get in better hunting. Um, so this area is a good area. You know, it's pretty fortunate to live where I live, really. When we go out pleasure hunting, you know, they'll, it could be just, just me, me and you, a uh, couple people um, meet up, get the dogs ready, make sure all the tracking equipment and everything's working, go to a, a place we've got permission that's you know, safe for the animals, and hopefully got a lot of coons, and turn them loose. Pleasure hunting, you pull up to your, your spot in the woods, um, you know, we've got different landowners that give you permission. Uh, pull up there, go back, get your dog out of the dog box, and you just, you walk to <clears throat> however you want to send them. Some people send them, I, I, I like to do a little variety of things. I like to cut them along the edges of woods. I like to cut them in woods. Um, cut them across fields to go to a woods. Just to, to get them that, that hunt style situation in. Um, but you just, you unsnap them, cut them loose. Now, I have what um, all 99% of the coon hunters have. We, they have Garmin tracking systems. It is a GPS tracking system. I personally always reset the collar info. And I like to watch how fast my dog's hunting, how much ground it's covered, and it tells you how far the dog is from you. I, I always look at my watch to see how long it takes them till they strike a track. When I say strike a track, that means that they've barked. They have opened on that trail, the scent of the trail of the coon. Um, and that's what, what you call a strike. So they're barking, they're trailing it. Once the dog strikes, he'll, should, run that track till he, he ends it, you know, in a tree, some, well, I say a tree, Sometimes they'll go in a bulldoze pile, a hole, or you know, a den tree or a, or a tree, you know, um, place of refuge, whatever. Coon hunting is a, it's very enjoyable. For one, you form a bond with your dog. What I love about it is when I have a dog that, that suits me and I like and it likes me, you form a bond with that dog and it is enjoyable and relaxing 
you know, to go out, pull up to one of your favorite spots, cut loose, and listen to that dog. It, it's, it's actually pretty amazing. I mean, them dogs, the way they operate when they're operating, that dog strikes a track here and drives it up this creek and up over this hill and hooks left. That old coon's trying to lose him. You know, he's trying to lose him and that dog rolls in there and it locates and it sets down treed. When a dog drives a track and it dies on that tree at that big locate, I mean, I don't know, you could have the worst day at work, but that that's a pretty good moment, really, man, when you're standing there and that dog just falls on there, yo, and then it starts treeing, you're, you don't, your mind kind of goes, everything at that moment, you're thinking about, shoot, yeah, I'm going to see what old Roscoe has, you know? For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. Hi, my name is Greg Maynard. I'm from uh, West Portsmouth, Ohio. We're having a competition coon hunt. Uh, guys are hunting for uh, a big purse here. I think uh, total purse was, uh, I don't know, over $180,000 or something like that. But uh, uh, $100,000 first place, uh, $30,000 second place, $20,000 third, and $12,000 fourth. And then also the uh, the top eight, you know, the, so that would be fifth through eighth. They got uh, sixty five hundred dollars back. So, yeah, Pro Sports uh, organization uh, that uh, we put together for uh, for competition coon hunting. We uh, uh, got some partners. Scott Engel, uh, longtime friend of mine. We we kind of uh, me and Scott met as a, a young young man and and. Uh, you know, 25 years ago, uh, coon hunting, and and of course this is uh, this has been a dream of ours to do something like this. We started out um, pro sport. We started out a truck series, and uh, Levi and his dad come on board. Levi and Jason Stevenson. They owned a car lot in Carrollton, Kentucky. Coon hunters too. Um, great people. Um, they wanted to. Uh, to jump in here with us and we started some truck events and, and we had one just with the hopes of, of it being a good event you know and, and everybody enjoying themselves but uh, it went so well that I think we've given away five trucks now and, and getting ready to give away a sixth one next month uh, brand new pickup trucks and, and and that's how this whole thing got started. The competition world um, has changed these these hunts have changed Pro Sport put on the first $100,000 first place prize payout coon hunt. That was the largest coon hunt, first, first place prize payout in history. You know, that was a $6,500 entry. It's a big entry, but it was a big payout. You win one round, you got your pay, your pay back, your entry back. So, and these guys, you know, these guys that are hunting in these, they, People say $6,500, yeah, that's a lot of money. But, but you don't understand the coon hunting circuit. These guys have that much faith in what they are packing. That they're, I mean, it's, people say, oh, it's just a coon dog. No, no, it's not. That's an athlete you're looking at, believe it or not. So 32 dogs um, break up into groups of four gives you eight cast, what we call eight cast here. So they go out and they compete early in a two hour, two hour hunt. Um, 
you get points for, for striking a coon. You know, you the first one that barks and the second one, there's a point system, 100, 75, 50, 25. And depending on what order they strike, same with, with uh, the tree, you know, same points that way. So then you at the end of the two hours, you combine your score and whoever's got the top score is your winner that advance on. So, so of those, you know, those eight casts, we had eight winners that come back in here. You had a 2.30 deadline that you had to be back here by. So we had eight dogs and we paired them into uh, groups of two. They was, they was going what we call a head-to-head -head battle with one another. And they go out and hunt two hours again. And uh, the winners of that cast, you know, the, the, the high scores of those, they advanced to the final four, which is here tonight. 32 dogs, uh, the final four. You went out and hunted, if you won, you hunted again, and if you won, you was in the final four. And uh, the final four in, in pro sport, mandatory is you have to hunt. There's no split in the purse. You hunt for placement and money. Uh, first place was 100 grand, second was 30, Third was 20,000 and fourth was 12. Uh, I'm grateful to make it. I, I made it to the final four. Uh, biggest thing I've ever done in my life. My favorite part of coon hunting is the competition. I don't like to lose at anything, nothing. Uh, I don't care if we're shooting basketball, guns, fishing. I don't like to lose. I think I've hunted in about 14 different states, uh, it, and it, that would be in competition hunts. Uh, I've been to as far out as Texas, Michigan, Pennsylvania, down the East Coast. Um, I mean, realistic th thousands, I, I would guess, yeah, thousands. You know, at an event like this, you know, I think the best of the best is here. I think, um, you know, any dog that was entered in this hunt could, could possibly win it. I think if we started a hunt next weekend with the same 32 dogs, you'd have a different winner. I, I honestly believe that. You know, that's the type of competition that there is out here. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of good dogs out here right now. Do you have passion? Do you have drive? Of course you do. But do you spend your days doing what makes you happy? If you're not doing what you love, you're wasting your time. Top Tier Canine is not just a dog trainer school, it's a business school. We seek those looking to join the pack. We are driven, we are passionate, and we are strengthened by each successful graduate. Time to work some dogs. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Later, loser! Why don't you head over to blackriflecoffee.com and get yourself set up with a coffee club subscription. So I know you feel protected in the suit. Don't make any sudden movements without me there giving specific instructions. You got it? Fine. Dogs love it. <laughs> I heard that you just bought insurance online. You really should work with somebody like Tom who has the experience and knows what he's doing. Oh, really? Safari Insurance is an independent agency. They represent companies like Auto Owners Insurance. They guide you by showing you all the coverages to keep you safe. Then you decide what fits you best. They guide, you decide. My opinion on, on what you need when you start out with an animal for the competition side of it, uh, obviously it needs to be most of the time their pedigree. You know, you'll get your freak here and there that's just awesome, but good genetics, good parents, uh, really 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 time consuming i mean you are going to have a lot of hours with that animal genetics in our sport is it's a it's a key role because every person is different okay there are certain lines of dogs pedigree lines that are 
good track dogs. There are certain pedigrees that are good tree dogs, certain, you know, that are trailing type dogs, action pack, just, just different. It's a, it, there's a very big spectrum of, of what a person likes, okay? So the genetic side of it is huge because not everybody's the same. You, you may not like what I like, I may not like what this person likes, so on and so forth. 20 years ago, these dogs were totally different type of dogs. They were pack dogs. I don't want to say they didn't hunt real hard, but they, they stayed together. Now they're independent. They're gonna tree a coon, 90% of them. Uh, genetics is big, big. Um, you've got to have good pedigree, good genetics, or like I said, I'm not saying the dog won't be good, a good coon dog, but there's a big difference between a good coon dog and a good competition dog. You know, they're, they're all different styles. You got some that are more, you know, hard, harder hunting, you know, run them edges and fence rows and pop up them coons. And most people are going for the hard hunting, natural independent dogs. Um, when I say independent, you know, you go to these competitions, you've got four dog casts. Still, at the end of the day, everybody wants their dog to be by itself. If we go hunting, my dog's over here, yours over here. I want mine to tree here, <laughs> yours should tree there. We'll go to see my coon, we'll go see your coon. Everybody wants that independent dog. Most, I shouldn't say everybody, most. And that's pretty much what's kind of going on in the breeding right now is this hard hunting independent breeding. And it's, it's seemed to be suiting the, the, the format of these hunts. Oh yeah, these animals, uh, these coon dogs, and, and any type of hound really, that's them. That's, that's, that's what they love to do. Um, you can keep one laid up in a kennel for a week or two, especially a younger type dog. It'll be wound for sound, want, wanting to go. I mean, that's, that's what it wants to do. It ain't nothing we teach them. You can't make one go hunting. They got to want to, and they do. I mean, that's just what they want to do. Everybody wants a natural dog. So training a dog, I guess there are a few man-made dogs out there, and I'm sure they're all, all dogs are tweaked somewhat to whatever man owns them or handling them. But I would say training is just 90% of just hunting the dog. My personal opinion is that dog either has it or it don't. It, they're bred and it's by nature, they want to go hunting, they want to go tree. So the first step to training is you've got to take that dog. You have to take it and put it in the woods. If you just buy it and leave it in the kennel or tie it out to the chain and never, it's, it's, it, it don't have the opportunity to learn. You have to, as a trainer, you have to give that dog that opportunity. Put it out there. That's the first step, I would say. The first and most important. It's just like, uh, you know, I coached high school basketball, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, it's basically, to me, whatever you put into something is what you're going to get out of it, is the way I feel. And it's no different with these hounds. Are you tired of the same old toolbox that doesn't keep your gear organized, clean, or protected? Then you need a cam locker. Our exclusively designed aluminum toolboxes have hefty T-handles, insulated lids, and feature the cam locker system. The toughest aluminum toolbox lock. Proudly manufactured in the USA, cam locker will be the best and last toolbox you will ever own. So keep your tools and gear secure with a cam locker toolbox. The key to security. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. 
For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our Kinetic Supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. The things about a dog that make them special to me is, honestly, I guess I would have to say, personality. If, if you truly spend enough time with your dog and pay attention to your dog and bond with that, that, that dog, you will see the personalities of your dog. You know, that's, it's really amazing um, that if you form a bond with your animal and you see their, their different personalities and at the end of the day that, that animal you know, you form a bond with it, and they're out there trying to please you. Jake, uh, Jake Moore hunted Trigger Man in that $100,000 hunt for Ashley and Oxidine and John Strickland. If you had Trigger in the dog box and he wasn't barking, driving down the road, you be, you're wasting your time. He, his, he wasn't into it. He wasn't gonna do it. It was one of his, like, personalities. If you loaded him in the truck and you were driving down the road and you heard, oh, 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 in the back of the, t the truck, people be looking at you like, what's, you got a dog barking in the back of the truck. But he was revved up and ready. Trigger man, he was our boy. Uh, Trigger got hit on the road November 20th. Uh, I was at a pro classic in Milton, Indiana. <sighs> When I got Trigger from Ashley Oxidine and John Strickland, he needed just a little bit of work. He was a coon dog, a good one, a great one. He just needed polished a little bit. He'd been here and there. And he was a real dominant type dog, and he had to trust you. You couldn't count Trigger out, period. Uh, you could take him dang near anywhere in, in the country and compete with anything. Uh, I'm not saying he was the best, but I beat what was supposed to be the best. If he was still alive today, I would beat what is supposed to be the best. They beat me too, but I'll beat him. I, I don't want to say he was a once in a lifetime dog because I hope I have another one like him. I've been fortunate to have a few, very few, great ones, and he was one of them. Um, he couldn't. When he treed, he had it. It wasn't nothing I did. I didn't make the dog. Uh, there was other people involved in that. I just polished. Uh, he was a special, special dog to us. He, he was special. People don't realize, or, or, or some people don't realize, I hope people that are watching this maybe think about this, what dogs, they're not just dogs. They're athletes. They're, and not just the hunting side of it, the rescue dogs, the law enforcement dogs. They're, they're not just dogs. They're, they're athletes. And they're, I mean, to me anyway, they're, they're family members. With Trigger getting, uh, he got hit by a car, uh, took the air out. I mean, I've debated on quitting since. It's a bad deal. A lot of people probably think, oh, they're hunting dogs. I, you know, you just hunt them, you're using them. That ain't the case. There is a lot more, them dogs are doing a lot for, I, I can say for myself, you know, that there's, I've went out there, had a lot on my mind, and that dog has went out there and cleared my mind, and that dog has helped me, you know, as a person too. They are your friends. They, you do form a bond with them. If you, you know, you spend that much time with an animal and you don't form a bond with them, you might need to just find a different hobby because you're missing the whole point. I, I hate to say it that way, but it's just, 
I know it's kind of a blunt way to say it, but that's how I feel. Um, yeah, I mean, you're missing the point. Well, unfortunately, our time is up here in Indiana. That's all the time we've got this week. I hope you enjoyed the little sneak peek into the competitive world of coon hunting. I want to encourage you, whether you're doing a sport or just throwing a, a Frisbee in the backyard, to get out and spend a little time with your own canine partner. You're going to love it, and I guarantee you the dog will have a great time. 